everyone and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, um, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Rachel. I make videos reviewing books and talking about science and history and social issues and even fun stuff like poetry and relaxing stuff and just kind of anything that interests me. Yeah, it's just all kind of like a lot of fun and it'd be great if you want to come along for the journey by hitting that subscribe button down there. Also, you can follow me on other social media. I post a lot of photography on Instagram and also pictures of my dog. I'm streaming on Twitch quite a lot at the minute, doing gameplay and Lego building and sometimes art streams, sometimes just chatting and stuff like that. I'm going to be on there straight after this video is premiered, building some Lego, finishing a pirate ship we started yesterday. It's going to be fun and um, yeah I think that's pretty much all the admin for now. Let's jump into the video and today I want to start by telling you a story. I want you to picture an English beach just before dawn. There's around 100 or so birds, maybe more, that are just peacefully pottering around. They're roosting there. There's oyster catchers, gulls, widgeons, curlews, dunlins and probably a few more as well. Some are resting, some are searching for food, some are interacting with each other but all of them are just going about their own business, doing whatever comes naturally to them as birds without hurting anyone else. It's a sight you'll see around nearly every beach in the UK at this time of morning. However, this one is a little bit different because in the shadows watching them is a group of around 10 or so humans. They knew the birds were gonna be there because most of the birds are creatures of habit. They frequently roost in the same sites and these humans know this and they're there because of the birds. The night before they came with tools to dig and they placed two large cannons on the beach, either side of the roosting area. And they attached a net that was spread between them. This morning that we're looking at, while it's still dark, the humans sneak around watching and waiting to hit a detonator. When the birds least expect it, the cannons are fired and a net shoots over them, trapping them. The people watching race towards the birds, yelling commands at each other. As the birds are stuck in a net, they flap around in fear, they cry out, they're scared, they're worried, they don't know what to do. They've just been caught by humans. You are stood there watching all of this. You're watching strangers capture birds and race towards them when they're clearly disturbed and scared and maybe in pain. What do you do? Because the thing is, this isn't a hypothetical situation. This has happened and sometimes continues to happen. So how do you feel about it? Imagine if this was on the internet and instead of me just telling you, well, we are on the internet, but imagine instead of me telling you this story, uh, you watched a two to three minute video on Twitter or YouTube or Facebook or whatever, showing you this happening, that little snippet that I just showed you there. What would you do? What would you say? How would you react? You'd probably be quite emotional because that's a pretty horrifying thing to think about or watch or look at or see, like distressed birds, hundreds of them, humans catching birds. Like, would you go on a rant about animal cruelty, about why people are catching and abusing these birds? Would you go on a rant about, you know, the digging of, to put the cannons in being destructive to the environment? Uh, would, you, would you be angry? Would you be upset? Because I know if I saw that, I would be, absolutely. And I can imagine if this was online, you'd get people sharing the story to prove how evil humans are and they're selfish and they don't care about the environment or nature or animals or blah, blah, blah. But the thing to remember is you're seeing this much of a much bigger picture. That small story I told is only one part of it. This little event might look serious and scary and bad at a glance, but it's actually one tiny, tiny, tiny cog in a whole machine that's working towards the conservation of a lot of native English birds. That scene in particular is part of a project to conserve one of the most beautiful birds found across the UK and Europe called the curlew. If you haven't heard of them before, that's absolutely okay. They're not necessarily spoke about all that much today, but I'd like to change that a little bit. Um, curlews are these beautiful little birds with these plump round bodies. They have these long necks and tiny heads with these long pointy round beaks that kind of look a bit like a crescent moon, um, which is interestingly kind of why they got their name. They have the most distinctive call. They're stunning. It's, it's a beautiful sound, almost haunting. And they can be found not only in the UK, but across a lot of Europe as well. There's a few different species of curlew, but today I'm just gonna be referring to them generally as curlews. 
The UK alone used to be home to hundreds of thousands of curlews and they've inspired countless poems and pieces of art and music over the years. However, in the last 30 years or so, their population has fallen rapidly and it continues to fall at an ever quickening rate. Since the 80s, there's been an over 60% decline in the population of curlews in many areas across Great Britain. If we only look at the numbers of breeding pairs, for example, there are only around 250 left in Northern Ireland and 400 in Wales. England and Scotland are slightly higher because bigger areas, bigger spaces, um, but they've also declined by a similar amount. The point is, compared to where they were, there are not many curlews left and it's kind of heartbreaking. It's got to the point now where they have been placed on the red list for conservation, which means they are of the highest concern. These animals, if we don't act, if we don't protect them, could very easily go extinct within our lifetimes. And this scary looking, scary sounding scene that I opened the video with is actually all part of the conservation efforts for curlews. The people are actually conservationists and they're using nets to catch the curlews and other birds where they roost. This method is actually the quickest and one of the safest ways to be able to catch and tag large numbers of curlews at once. Basically, once they're caught in the net, the people run over quickly, transfer the birds into holding pens so they don't hurt themselves in the panic. That rush that we saw or heard about the people is actually an effort to make sure the birds don't hurt themselves anymore. Then, once the birds are in the little holding pens or little holding cages sort of things, the people collect information on each bird. We're talking species, age, weight measurements, and the curlews in particular are fitted with small geolocators which will be retrieved from them later. And the information is used to help us understand the behaviors of these beautiful little animals. You know, where they go, how long they stay in one place, who they're kind of hanging around with and that kind of thing. And once we have this information, we'll actually be able to put more solid plans into place to make real long-term changes which will benefit the curlews and hopefully help stop them dying. Afterwards and as soon as possible, once all the birds have been tagged and the information collected on them, every single bird is released back into the wild completely unharmed and mostly not hurt or bothered or scared at all. They're treated very well, they're treated very gently and carefully and most of them are absolutely, in fact probably all of them, absolutely fine. It's thought that the biggest threat to curlews comes from changes in farming over the last, you know, couple of hundred years, but in particular in the last 50 or so years. But we can't just say, oh, it's probably farming and then make changes and hope for the best because that could greatly impact the farmer's livelihoods as well. And that could really, really make some people, especially smaller businesses, struggle. So we need to collect as much information as possible about the birds and where they live and how they behave and the areas they live in and the people and other animals who live and work in those areas to be able to make real long-term changes, to be able to put real plans in place that suit everyone. And that includes the birds, the farmers, the people who live in the area, the other animals that live in the nature and the habitats themselves. So let's think about this. A scene which from the outside looks dangerous and scary is actually something that has been designed to try and save an entire species or several species of bird. An event which looks like it might be harming a few individual birds has actually been thought out to make sure no birds are injured if possible and ultimately works towards benefit the species and their survival as a whole. What I'm saying is, this is not what it seems on the surface. And that's why I wanted to share this story today because not only do I want to teach you about curlews because they're amazing and kind of raise awareness of the conservation efforts, but I also want to get you thinking about what this means on the whole and how you can apply this situation to your everyday life. This isn't just about the curlews. This is about me telling you a story. It may be giving you an emotional reaction and then revealing more information. I could have honestly opened with any story, it didn't have to be the one of the curlews, because these kinds of things happen every day, we only see a small amount of the picture ever. It didn't have to be me telling you a story about curlews, it could have been a photo on Twitter, it could have been an interaction you overheard in public, it could have even been a whole YouTube video or a news article or a story your friend tells you, but ultimately it's only one small piece of a much bigger picture that makes up our life and our world and... <sighs> There's a lot going on, isn't there? The thing is, as humans, we make snap judgments when we see things and we're actually encouraged to do this a hell of a lot and we're kind of manipulated to do this as well. I mean, the whole goal of marketing is to generate quick emotional reactions in us, which gets invested enough to find out more and eventually funnel us towards consuming a product which gets big companies money. We're literally manipulated in our day-to-day -day life into having these quick emotional reactions because ultimately it gets people money. 
and we're kind of pushed into reacting this way, we're almost rewarded for acting this way. Most of the things we see online or in magazines, for example, or advertisements or on YouTube or absolutely anywhere, are literally put together with the purpose of making us emotional. They're literally put together to try and elicit those snap judgments and not encourage us to look any further or ask any deeper questions. They're encouraging us to keep feeling that emotional response so we keep funneling down the path they want, eventually leading to the company making money. But it's not just that we're being manipulated by marketing because we kind of need something there to manipulate anyway. It's also a bit of an impulse left over from our evolution. You know, our brains evolved to make quick judgments about something um, to try and figure out, you know, is this thing I'm seeing good or bad? Is it safe or dangerous? And sometimes these instincts are great today because they can save our life. For example, um, you know, if we're being followed by someone on a dark street, if we're being mugged, if we're in any kind of life or death situation where quickly assessing information in front of you and acting immediately is essential, these snap judgments save lives. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's completely natural as a human to listen to a story like the one I told you in the beginning of this video and make a snap judgment with the limited information you have and react emotionally. That's very normal, it's very human, it's completely understandable. But that doesn't mean your judgment and your emotional reaction are always correct. And sometimes when you have the time and you're not in a life or death situation, it's actually worth taking a little time to take a breath, take a step back and just think things through a little more logically. Instead of just hearing the story in the beginning and maybe acting emotionally and thinking, oh human's bad, save bird, it's worth thinking, well, hang on, what's actually going on here? How do I know these birds are actually getting hurt? How do I know these humans have bad motives? How do I know this isn't a part of something bigger? And so on. When we see things, especially online, it's easy to look at something small, like a tweet, and think, this makes me angry, let me shout about it. But imagine how much further we could take our ideas and our discourse, and imagine how much more helpful it would be if we took a step back and said, hang on, so what is actually being said here in this tweet? Let me not just take it at the 280 characters it is. Let me think about this a little bit deeper. Let me think about what's actually being said, what is the context? What motivation do we think this person had? How can we find out what their actual motivation was instead of just assuming? Is this thing they're saying something we actually need to act on? Or is this something we can just question and have a conversation about and that'll fix it? Is this something I actually need to get angry and emotional about? Or is this something that we could calmly discuss and try and figure out? Is this tweet what it seems on the surface? or is there something a little bit more to it? Is there something deeper? Is there some wider context I need to be aware of? Imagine, for example, um, in the Curly situation, if a passerby had seen this whole thing and immediately gone running in there, there to save the birds and he tried slashing at the net and let all the birds free and blah, 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 um, or he tried to scare the birds off before they had a chance to be caught or whatever. If someone had seen that and immediately acted emotionally, imagine how awful that would actually have been because of, you know, the, the conservation efforts would have been set back in time and money and the equipment would have been damaged and it would have actually been worse for the birds because it would have delayed curlew conservation efforts. Sometimes that's what happens in general when we get emotional online and we, or, or in real life, and we act without really thinking about it. The point is not everything is straightforward and some events are a lot more complex, but the whole point of this video and this little conversation was mostly just to kind of give you a little something to think about and encourage you all to be a little bit more patient and thoughtful. I know I need to be, I know I'm way too emotional sometimes and it's a big flaw and a fault I have. And so I'm making this video as much for myself as for any of you guys. I don't wanna sit here and pretend I'm some saint who never does anything wrong because I'm as guilty of this stuff as anyone else. But yeah, sometimes there's more to a story than you see at first glance. And sometimes there are reasons or motives behind things that you can't see by just looking or glancing. Sometimes the consequences of an action can on the surface seem innocent or harmful, but when you dig deeper, they may be way more complex and bigger than you first realize. Things that can seem great on the surface can actually be really bad, and things that can seem awful on the surface can actually be part of a much bigger kind of, I guess, like machine to do something good. And it's hard to figure out the context, and it's hard to look deeper, and it takes time, and it takes effort, but it's important that we keep doing it and encouraging it. Now, I don't wanna like over explain to you guys and like end up being patronizing at all. I wanna kind of leave this open to you at this point to kind of have a ponder about and have a discussion down in the comments. 
I do want to encourage you all to try and think a little more before you just immediately react to something. And like I say, I'm trying to make a conscious effort to do that myself. And it is hard. It's really hard. Overriding your emotional brain and every kind of fast, quick, immediate impulse you have is tough, but it's so important. And even if you can kind of just start to take little steps in that direction, that's a really positive thing. Again, that's not to say that emotional reactions don't have their place, like when you think you might be in danger, but it's just, they also have a place where you need to put them aside and override them. So I guess in the comments, I want you guys to kind of like have a think and a little discuss amongst yourselves and kind of think this through. Like, have you ever seen any examples where you've seen maybe a tweet or an article or a headline or a photograph or a short video that's made you have an emotional response, whether that's like to be angry or sad or even happy or whatever. And it's later turned out it was part of something much bigger that you didn't understand at a first glance. I want you to have a think about if you've ever seen that or if you've seen someone else do that and what the consequences were, how you think maybe you could have handled it differently or how the other person could have handled it differently. Yeah, just kind of like have a think about this stuff and think about how you can kind of overcome these emotional impulses because it's not just a matter of, well, I'm gonna stop doing it because it's not that easy. Do you have something that you could do to help yourself or do you have something that you do that helps you kind of stop and take a step back? Do you have any advice for other people in how in terms of how to do that? That's that's what I'd like you to discuss and talk about and yeah, I think it's it's really important, interesting stuff and I just kind of wanted to try and get you thinking with this video. I don't know if it worked, but I hope it did. We'll see. Before I end this though, I do want to give a quick shout out to the fantastic book which inspired this video, and that is Curlew Moon by Mary Colwell. Beautiful book. It combines poetry and art and some fantastic nature writing to tell the story of curlews in the UK and raise awareness of the conservation efforts going towards trying to protect and save them. Like I say, lovely, stunning, beautiful book, very well written really inspires you to think about so much. You know, how we treat the environment, how technological advances, which seem to be so exciting and efficient, are actually really damaging the environment and nature and us animals who live in it. It makes you think about what it means to be human and the relationship we have with the world around us. It makes you wonder what really gives us as humans a right to thrive over any other creature because I don't think we do but a lot of people live their life assuming we do. I sometimes do as well and it yeah this book amongst other things really kind of makes you think and kind of start reassessing that and questioning these things you kind of take for granted. It definitely makes you stop and appreciate the little bits of nature which surround us every day that we might be taking for granted. And of course, reading it, I was able to draw some parallels between the actions of those in the book and other issues facing society today. So there's a hell of a lot going on in this beautiful but quite short little book. And overall, I thoroughly recommend it. And if you wanna check it out, I will leave an affiliate link down in the description below so you can grab yourself a copy. And if you do, it also goes a little way to helping support me and my channel. So there's that. Um, sorry, my chest squeaking on the settee every time I move might be a bit annoying. But yeah, uh, that's I think where I'm going to end this today. But I would love to hear your thoughts and your discussion points down in the comments. Don't feel it's like homework. There's no right or wrong answers. Just, you know, have a think, have a discuss, work things through in your head and with other people. Talk about these things, challenge each other, and but, you know, in a polite way. And yeah, just have a think about how we're all acting and how we can kind of try and make the world a little bit of a better place. That's what I'm hoping people try and take away from this video, but we'll see, I don't know. I'm probably rambling now. <laughs> um, anyway, if you are watching this premiere live, please head over to Twitch now and we are gonna be building some Lego and maybe hopefully discussing some of this stuff as well. And if you are watching this at another time, then also head over to Twitch and watch some of my old streams. Have a look at what I've got coming up, should be fun. And um, I've just made affiliate now, so if you like join, you'll get some little custom little emoji type things with Kyra's face and it's really cute and wonderful and all that fun stuff and yeah come come join it'll be fun I'm rambling thanks for watching today I appreciate you guys a hell of a lot and I'll see you all again really really soon bye